Hello everyone, this is Disha Rastogi. I am a digital analytics consultant. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about how to prepare for Azure Data Engineer DP203 exam. We are going to discuss topics like where to start, what resources to use and what should be the revision strategy. I recently cleared this exam and so I thought we'll share some useful tips for the preparation. If you find this video helpful, please like and hit the subscribe button. So let's get started. DP203 is a combined version of DP200 which is implementing an Azure data solution and DP201 which is designing an Azure data solution. DP200 and DP201 retired on 30th June 21. Right? Now this exam consists of 61 questions plus 4 to 6 questions on case study. Now case study questions not appear in the beginning right and when you click on finish test this interface appears so make sure you keep enough time for answering them it tests the following topics in detail design and implement data storage which is 40 to 45 percent the next one is design and develop data processing which is 25 to 30 percent Next is design and implement data security, which is 10 to 15 percent. And lastly, it is monitor and optimize data storage and data processing, which is 10 to 15 percent again. Right? A good starting point for this certification is Microsoft course itself. This is the link. You can go and check it out. Now, the different topics in this course can be covered in three phases. The first phase is all about introduction where you cover Azure for the data engineer and how you store data in Azure. The second phase is focused towards Synapse Analytics and its related services, right? And the last phase is all about data processing. So you cover Databricks, Streaming Analytics, Data Lake Storage, and that is how you can cover the entire course and it is a very crisp and concise course and I really liked the way Microsoft has covered the content. Here I have listed out the most important topics that you need to prepare for the exam, right? So how to choose partition key, copy behavior in data factory, snowflake and star schema, what are the SS tires in Azure Blob Storage? Types of integration runtime in Data Factory. Again, Data Factory is a super important topic for this exam. The next one, you should know which service to use when. Data Factory, Data Lake Storage, Data Breaks, Streaming Analytics, SQL Database, Synapse Analytics, Cosmos DB. Know which to use when you will get questions where you have three of these options like SQL database, Synapse Analytics, or most in the options, and you will need to choose one of them. Right? The next one is cluster modes in Databricks. You should know which encryption features are available to you in Azure. Then you should know. In monitoring, log analytics, Azure monitor, and alerts. These three topics are very important under the monitoring category. Next is you should know how to optimize or reduce latency in Stream Analytics, Cosmos DB, and Data Factory. Migrating on premise databases, Azure, types of Cosmos DB API. Right? So these are very important topics. Apart from that, I have uploaded a file in the description. Please go through that. It has the must read articles that you need to prepare before appearing for the exam. You will definitely get some questions from those articles. Okay. So 
so that's one so these are the services that you must do hands on before appearing for the exam right so data lake storage storage account sql database cosmos db data factory synapse stream analytics data bricks and sql queries now sql queries is a very important topic you will get four to five questions on this one you need to go through important sql functions like lag last date function okay be very thorough with sql now coming to our revision strategy let's discuss some sample topics to formulate a revision strategy on how we can be you know very smart about it and it will be you know super useful for us so this is one topic that you will definitely get tested on in the exam you should have an idea of what are the keywords in the question that can help you differentiate between these tools or services and as i would say the elimination strategy so you can identify like if you have a question which has data break stream analytics and some other options as well so you should be able to identify whether you want to go for data bricks or stream analytics right so i am going to discuss two topics which will help you understand what and how you can make this strategy for each of these services how you can use the elimination strategy right so let's get started let's discuss data bricks versus stream analytics now why i have chosen this topic because it's a very important topic and you will definitely get one question around uh, this let's look at some keywords that we can use to identify whether we need to use data bricks or stream analytics so data bricks is optimized for both batch and stream data whereas stream analytics is strictly a stream solution so if you have a question that needs a solution for both you would go for data bricks but if only stream and no other specific details related to data bricks are mentioned you can go for stream analytics right the next one is optimization now whichever technology or service you have you should always go for optimized solutions in the situation solutions that need less configuration and less development or effort the next one is cluster modes another keyword which whenever mentioned means we are talking of data bricks there can be some other features related to these modes mentioned in the question by which you can identify that the solution is data bricks example if we talk about auto termination setting by default then we know we are talking about standard or single node clusters because standard and single node clusters has this feature that they terminate automatically after 120 minutes by default next is windowing functions again in general if a question is straightforward simply mentions any of these windows for streaming data tumbling popping sliding session or snapshot window and no other detail is mentioned just simply go for stream analytics right next is manage spark clusters now manage spark clusters it's again one of the key features to remember for data bricks always remember cluster related anything it means data bricks right when it is data bricks versus stream analytics okay so you can have clusters in different other services as well next is multiple languages now in stream analytics we know that we use stream analytics query language which is a subset of standard tsql syntax for doing streaming computation in data bricks you get support for different languages like java C hash, Python, R, Scala, SQL. So if a question is asking for Java support, you can identify it is DataBricks and not Stream Analytics. Another important topic for this exam is Azure Data Lake Storage, right? 
So let's discuss some of the keywords for this particular service. So first one is multiple formats. One of the many characteristics of big data is its variety. Now ADLS, that is Azure Data Lake Storage, is suitable for storing all types of data coming from different sources like devices, applications, and so on. So whenever anything related to multiple formats or variety of data is mentioned, ADLS is the optimized solution for it. The next one is folders. Another keyword to identify ADLS. Next is big data. So ADLS is optimized for big data workloads. Now ADLS was created to support analytics workloads that require large throughput in order to improve performance and reduce latency. Right. And next is hierarchical namespace. Now, this is a very important feature of ADLS. It allows the collection of objects or files within an account to be organized into a hierarchy of directories and nested subdirectories in the same way that the file system on your computer is organized. Right. So this is some examples of how we can create our revision strategy for these kind of exams. You need to create a dictionary for these services and also for similar services like Databricks and Stream Analytics where both can be used for stream data. You need to know how you will eliminate the other one, right? Let's look at some useful tips for clearing this exam. The first one is Keywords. Always try to identify tools by keywords and when answering questions in exam, look for these very keywords, right? We did this in the past few slides, right? When we were discussing the revision strategy. The next one is elimination strategy. So as we discussed in the previous slides, this strategy always works best for these exams. The next is practice, practice and practice. Certification is the start of the journey, not the destination. You need to keep doing hands on to stay in touch with the tool, right? The next is pace yourself. Don't be in a hurry to clear the exam. There is no shortcut to knowledge. Give yourself time. And the last is the information that I have shared in this video is based on my personal experience. It calls out important articles for reference so as to make the learning process easier and effective. You can also go for Udemy practice test. The link is given in description. That's it from my side. All the best for your preparation and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.